Hi, I'm Krista Jacobson, headmistress of the Buddha Yukai, where we teach authentic ninjutsu and classical samurai bujutsu. And for those of you who don't know what that is, it's the ancient martial arts of the ninja and samurai. In today's video, we're going to be discussing how to predict a violent attack. Many times in this channel, we talk about situational awareness, self-defense, reality-based self-defense, survival skills, uh, various techniques that you can do against various different attacks. We talk about so many things that is revolved around self-defense. But one thing that we haven't talked about is how to predict a violent attack. What are the indicators that you should be looking for before a situation actually happens? That is what we're going to be talking about today in this video. Now, before I begin, I always give a shout out to all of my new viewers. So if this is the first video that you guys have seen of me, my name is Krista Jacobson. I am the headmistress of the Buddha Yukai, which means School of the Warrior Way. We teach Koryu Ninjutsu and Koryu Bujutsu, so the ancient martial arts of the ninja and samurai. This organization does have other areas of focus, such as reality-based self-defense, weapons training and tactics, concealed carry, survival skills, martial arts theory, thought and philosophy, martial arts conditioning. If any of those topics at all interest you, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Don't forget to click the bell. I do post two to three videos every single week. So if you're interested in any of those topics, subscribe to the channel, click the bell, and keep up with what we're doing. Okay, so how to predict a violent attack. Now, before we really get into the different indicators that you should be looking for, we need to talk about two things to kind of lead us into why I'm making this particular video. One is situational awareness, and the other one is circumstantial situation. Let me explain. Situational awareness is the ability to kind of read the land, if you will, be connected to the elements and the energy around you, reading the people, the flow of energy, what's going on, who's going to be the biggest threat, where are the exits, you know, that sort of thing. You're kind of reading the environment, you're connected to the elements, and you're understanding the situation. That's what we call that situational awareness. The other aspect to that is what we call circumstantial situation. Now, what I mean by this is there was an action that led to this action, which puts you in the situation that you're in. It was just a circumstance of events. So let me give you an example. Let's say that you're driving to the store and um, as you're driving to the store, you're, you're not really paying attention. You're listening to your music and uh, you're pulling up and you see that there's a parking spot. So you pull into the parking spot and you're shutting everything off in your car, turn off the radio, and then you get out of your car and then someone walks up to you that's super upset and they're like, why did you cut me off? Why did you take my parking spot? Blah, blah, blah. That is a, an event of circumstantial situation. Because of the circumstances, that circumstance led to the situation that you're in. It wasn't something where it's situational awareness where you're taking a step back away from the element and reading the elements and understanding where you can do things, what you can do, how you can do it, and when you're going to do it. This, when we talk about circumstantial situation, we're talking about an event that happened. And because of that circumstance, that particular situation, that puts you in the position that you're in. It could be the other way around. You're driving to the store and you're the one that wants to take a parking spot and someone else cuts you off and they take the parking spot and then you're you decide well you're just going to park over here and you want to ask them the questions like you know hey man why'd you cut me off right that was my I had my blinker on that, that what are you doing right even then that because of the circumstance it led to the situation so in this video we need to make sure that we kind of separate the two ideas although Situational awareness and circumstantial situations are both covered when you're truly training in Saki Jutsu within the ninja martial arts. They are two completely different things and we need to know that before we get into this particular video. So we're going to be using that situation where you pull into the store and you're not paying attention. You take the first parking lot that you see, completely innocent. You're listening to the radio and you pull into someone's parking place and you didn't realize that you cut someone off and you took someone else's parking spot. We're going to be talking about that situation and how to read specific indicators. In fact, there are seven indicators that you should be looking for and how by looking at these seven indicators that will help you predict a violent attack. So you're driving the store, you pull in the parking lot, you see if there's space open, completely innocent, and you pull into the space. You have no idea that you just cut somebody off and took their parking space. As you're parking into the spot, they obviously park their vehicle and they're getting out walking to your car. You're just, you know, shutting off the radio that you listen to, you grab your purse, you grab your wallet, all this kind of thing. Maybe your, your shopping list that you have to get while you're at the store and you're gathering up everything and then you turn the car off and then you get out. At this point, you see an individual walking to you and they're having words with you, right? This is the first thing that you have to look at. Number one, body. You have to read body language. Are they just saying words 
or are they someone that's going to be doing something extremely violent? Reading body language is extremely important. The things that they're doing with their body as they are approaching you is what's going to indicate whether they want to get into a physical violent situation or if they just want to say some words and, you know, speak their mind, say their words, be an ass, and then walk about their business. You know, you can always try to diffuse the situation. You know, sir, I'm sorry. I was not paying attention. You're absolutely right. I cut you off. You know, of course, you're going to be going through those situations because diffusing the situation is always better. But just because you're attempting to diffuse a situation doesn't always mean that's what's going to happen, right? So the number one indicator is body language. You're going to look at the body. When they're approaching you, how are they approaching you? Are they approaching you in a way that they want to engage in physical violence? Or are they approaching you in a way where they just want to have words with you and then just kind of blow some steam and then move on about their day? Number two, you have to look at the eyes. And what I mean by looking at the eyes, you can always tell when someone's going to be starting a physical um, violent attack, when they're gonna, they want to engage in physical violence, they're going to kind of look at you and look down and look at you and look down because they're not going to just stay here. They might look at, your, look at your chest, look at your throat and be like, you know, this, and they're kind of looking down and looking over here. They want to see, is there going to be someone watching them? Is there going to be witnesses? They're kind of, ga you know, gauging the situation, but their eyes are not going to stay on you. They're, gen they're generally going to look down like this and look up and then look over here and look over there. Make sure that their eyes stay focused because once their eyes start going off you and back and they're continually to talk to you in a way that's very aggressive, that's an indicator that it could lead to a physically violent situation. Number three, nose. Look at their nose. Are their nostrils flaring out? Are they taking short breaths because they got adrenaline going on? You have to look at the way that they're breathing. And that's extremely important because people who their, their nostrils are not flared out and they're not taking short, quick breaths, they're more relaxed and they're probably just wanting to say a few words to you and kind of speak their mind. But if you see someone walking up aggressive, so you've read the body language, their eyes are looking at you and looking this way and their nose are flared up and they're taking short breaths like this, that is a good indicator that something physical and violent may happen. Number four, we're looking at the mouth. Are they clenching their jaw? Are they do that aggressive look? That's something that you need to look for because a lot of times people get super tense when they're getting ready to do something really aggressive, right? Especially people who are not trained. They get they get upset, they've let emotions take over, they're angry, they're aggressive, and this is just part of that process where you're trying to read key indicators. So at this point, you should have read the body. Are they walking up to you in an aggressive manner and they, they, want, a, they want to engage physically in some sort of violence? Uh, you're reading the eyes, are they looking at you, or are they looking away? Are their, nostril, are their nostrils flared up and they're taking short breaths? And are they clenching their jaw? Like this, that's something that does indicate whether or not they could lead into some sort of physical violent situation. Number five, we're looking at the arms. Now, when you're looking at the arms, the two things you're just trying to find as an indicator are are they making right angles with their arms and are they making a fist? Generally, when someone wants to have a violent situation, they want to physically engage in violence, they're going to make a fist. They're not going to keep their hands open like this. They're going to make a fist. They're going to be like this, and they got it back. And for me to punch, I'm going to make a 90-degree angle, so I'm going to kind of raise my arms up like this. Notice I got a fist, and they're going to have something like, you know, I'm walking up. I'm eyeballing you this way. My nostrils are flared. I'm clenching my jaw, and I'm going to be like... You know, why did you take my parking spot? Notice that 90 degree angle and here's my fist, you know, just something like this and, and I'm like this and this is clenched and I got this and my nostrils are flare. These are situations that you're looking at. This is reading the body language and these are indicators that they intend to now start and engage in physical violence. Number six, putting things away. A lot of times people have things in their hands uh, when they're walking up to you. Like in the modern day, we'd have a cell phone or maybe get your car keys or you have something with you, but they're walking up to you. And again, you're reading the body. It looks like they're having an aggressive body language as they're walking up to you. You're looking at the eyes and looking around and doing this kind of thing. Their nostrils flare, short breaths, jaw clenching. If they take their phone and put their phone away or they're adjusting their clothing, right? Many times you see people, um, they walk around with their britches below their butt, you know what I mean? And when you watch that, you're always going to pull their britches up, they adjust their shirt, they get back, and they kind of put themselves in a position where, you know, they can physically do something. That's something that you need to find as an indicator as well, because if they have something in their hands, 
Clearly, they could still use it as some sort of improvised weapon. But if you see them start putting things away and then adjusting their clothing as they're coming up to you, that is an indicator that they do intend to engage in some sort of physical violence. Number seven, we're looking at the legs. Do they blade their body off? Now what I mean by this, are they going to kind of step in this situation like this? See, I've kind of bladed away from the camera, and in this situation, this can be my right angle, I'm like this, and why'd you take my parking spot, you know, this, I'm using this hand here to talk to you and kind of get my distance, and you know, and I'm looking at you here, my eyes here, my nostrils are flared, I'm clenching my jaw, and you took my spot, and blah, 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 and this, that, and the other. But notice, here's the 90 degree angle with the hand, I've got this here, I'm talking here, I blade it off. When you blade off, that means you can load on the backside so you can come in for a quick strike. And that's another indicator that they've now positioned themselves themselves to then effectively throw a strike. So you really need to make sure that you look at that situation because if they've bladed their body and they still have a 90 degree angle with their arm and they have a fist and they're putting this out here, looking here, looking around, clenching their jaw, nostrils flared, short breaths, all this, you need to put yourself in a situation to protect yourself if this individual starts to engage in a physical violent situation. Always remember, violence doesn't just happen for no reason. Something has to happen that leads to a situation for violence to take place. And you might not always see those things, but something is going to happen that it ends up turning into violence. Now, like we've talked about, yes, there is situation awareness, being aware of your surroundings, the elements, the people around you, all these kind of things, but there's also circumstantial situations that happen and you're not always in control of those particular circumstantial situations, kind of like the situation that we talked about today. But you have to understand all these different areas of self-defense, whether it's situation awareness or circumstantial situations, by understanding both how they work and how you can understand different indicators and um, things that may or may not happen in the situation, that understanding helps you better prepare and put yourself in a better position to prevail victorious in a situation that may be become physically violent. Now, in the ninja martial arts, one of the things that we talk about is sake jutsu, or they call it the killing intent. Now, sake jutsu is comprised of many different things that you have to study and practice to really acquire these skills. Two of those things that are absolutely part of Saki Jutsu is situational awareness and circumstantial situations. And understanding both of those will increase your Saki Jutsu as well when you're training in traditional Koryu Ninjutsu. One thing is for sure, regardless of the situation you're in, always be prepared. Always have some sort of a weapon or a tool that you can always get to to kind of even the playing field in case someone is bigger, stronger, or has some sort of a weapon or something they can use against you. So you always want to make sure that you are completely prepared in every situation once you leave the house. Understand situational awareness. Understand circumstantial situations that happen just as the day moves because everything is so dynamic and everything's constantly moving. But once that circumstantial situation happens and someone is approaching you, you have to understand those seven indicators. You got to read the body, understand body language. You got to look at the eyes. Are they focused on you? Are they looking around to see if there's witnesses? Are they kind of looking down to get you off uh, focused on what they're doing? You have to look at the eyes. You got to look at the nose. Are they flaring their nostrils? Are they taking short breaths? You got to look at the mouth. Are they clenching their jaw? Are they getting tense? Are they getting angry? Are they trying to build up for something, right? The next thing you want to do is make sure look at their arms. Do they have right angles? Are they preparing themselves to throw a punch? Do they clench in their fist? That's extremely important. Look at the legs. Are they kind of blading their body off, loading on the back leg, kind of putting their hands out there, getting in your face so they can throw the strike? Are they positioning themselves in a way to throw an effective strike? You've got to read that as well. Are they putting things away? You know, whether it's their wallet they have in their hand, their phone, things like this. Are they putting things away and adjusting their clothing as they're walking up? All these things are indicators that you need to pay attention to because if you miss these particular indicators, that is what's going to be the line between them throwing an attack that you wasn't prepared for versus them throwing an attack and you was prepared for that particular attack. Now, although Kamai is not going to be part of the lesson today, Kamai is very important in this particular situation. Make sure that you use the proper Kamai, spirit, attitude, or posture when a particular situation happens. You have to put yourself in the most advantageous situation to prevail against physical violence. So make sure that you're blading yourself off or you're getting in the proper position, depending on their position, that you can now be prepared regardless of what situation happens to then overcome this particular physical violence that may happen. So that's your guys' video today. If you guys are interested in authentic ninjutsu and classical samurai bujutsu, please check out our website at www.budodyuninjutsu.com. There you guys can see the seven traditions, the areas of training that we teach, the different philosophies and strategies that we teach within our curriculum. If you don't live next to one of our schools, you guys can always join the Budodyukai online ninjutsu dojo and you guys can start training with us 
today. So thank you guys very much for all of your love and support. I deeply appreciate it. And until next time, take care, be safe, and good luck in your journey of Budo. Bye.